Let's have a little look at today's lesson then. Today we're talking about how much food we should eat, portions of food, so what is a portion, and also about the different food groups and why they're good for us. So as you can see here, I've got loads of different foods on my table, loads of different representations, different types of foods. So we're gonna be discussing those today, seeing why they're good for us and how that can stay, help us stay healthy, happy, fit and strong. So, first thing before we get started, some of you remember these from last week, some of you will just be joining us today. So we'll have a little recap of our fundamentals, we've got our actions for these. Can anyone remember the action for eat well? Show it to your adult who's with you right now, show it to the people in your room or in your classroom, wherever you're watching from, the action for eat well, what did we do? I think we did some eating an apple off a tree, or we might have peeled a banana, we might have cut into our dinner, we are starting to eat well, fantastic. For drink well, we were turning the tap, filling up our cup of water, and having a nice drink. Move well. Might be jogging on the spot, doing some star jumps, being active, getting ready to go, showing your muscles, and sleep well. And again, the nice and clean. And there's one more thing we can add to that where we might be even reading our book, showing that 10, and then going to sleep. We're going to quickly recap some of these. The first one, eat well, we're going to talk about a lot today. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this one, but I've got a question for you. Which area have I covered, covered up today? The pink area there with meat and eggs, nuts, pulses, things like that. What have I covered up? It's good for growth and repair of our bodies. Can you comment below which area you think I have covered up? And let's see if you can get that right. See if you can remember from last week. It's going to be important today. So it would be this area here on our plate. Which area have I covered up? The green area there, nice big one, is our fruits and vegetables. Lots of different vitamins and minerals. Our yellow area is our starchy carbohydrates. Last week we learned they gave us loads and loads of energy, kept us going. Our blue area are our dairy and alternatives, so those kind of things might have loads of calcium in them, lots of vitamins and minerals, as well as some sugars to give us energy, and also the pink area, protein. Well done for those people who put it. A few people got that right, fantastic. So, our protein area there, good for growth and repair. Well done, we're gonna cover a lot more on our eat well plate later on. Let's have a think about drink well. So, that action, turning the tap, filling up our cup. How many times do we need to do it? Comment below, how many cups of water do we need to try and have each day? Can you tell me, can you remember from last week? Can you have a guess? Let's have a think. So, how many cups of water each day? If we don't drink enough water, that's when we might start feeling tired, dizzy, sick, we might feel a bit weak, we might get headaches, we might feel a bit cranky. If we do have lots of water, if we have this amount of water throughout the day, if we're drinking small sips regularly throughout the day, and staying nice and hydrated, our skin will be a lot healthier, our hair and our nails and our bodies will feel a lot smoother and a lot healthier for us to be able to be active, because our bodies use water in everything that we do. That we do. So, who got it right? Let's have a little look at some of the comments. Have a look at some of the answers on there. Six to eight cups a day. Well done, those people who said that. Fantastic. Jonah, I know you got that one right. Fantastic work. Six to eight cups of water a day. Really, really good. That's going to keep us nice and healthy. Our next one, move well. One of my favourites, one of your favourites. I know lots of people were doing this last week. People going outside and skipping. People going outside doing jumps and stuff to keep themselves active. Moving well. How many minutes should we aim to be active every single day? Comment, put it in the chat box, how many minutes should we aim to be active every single day? We're going to do one minute's worth now. So, are we ready? We're going to be up, find a nice space, make sure there's nothing around you, nothing you're going to trip over, nobody you're going to bump into, make sure you've got plenty of room. We're going to do one minute of activity to get ourselves warm, a bit sweaty, heart beating fast, out of breath. Are you ready? Start with me, just jogging on the spot. Here we go. We're going to jog on the spot. I'm going to start doing some star jumps. So arms and legs out nice and wide, jumping up and down, bouncing up and down, doing our star jumps, keep the movement, do one minute non-stop, jogging on the spot again. Fantastic. Are we ready? We're going to go a little bit faster now. So we're going to do some of our rocket jumps from last week. So we're going to touch the ground and jump up in the air. Touch the ground, jump up in the air. Keep on moving, keep jumping up and down, touch the ground. Keep working really, really hard. And jogging on the spot again. We're halfway through, we've done 30 seconds. Can you go a little bit faster? Can you go even faster than before? Are you ready? We're gonna 
Touch our toes to the side and stretch up. Touch our toes to the side and stretch up. Can you go even faster than you were doing last time? Can you keep getting faster and faster as we go? And we're going to go on the spot as fast as we can now for the last bit. Get those arms and legs going really, really fast. Last few seconds, five, four, three, two, one. And put your hand on your heart for me. Some of you will be out of breath. Some of you will find your heart beating really, really fast. You might be breathing heavily, you might be sweating, you might be warmer, you might be taking your jumper off, saying, whew, I'm a bit warm after that. But that is the kind of exercise we need to be doing, getting our heart beating fast, getting us out of breath. That's going to be vigorous exercise. So that was one minute. How many minutes do we need to do? 60, an hour a day. It doesn't have to be that you're running on the spot for an hour a day. Any activities that you like to do, so riding your bike, playing football, doing gymnastics, swimming, whatever it could be, is going to get your heart beating fast like that. You'll not even notice that you're having so much fun, your heart's beating fast, you're working really, really hard. Anything that uses our whole body, gets us out of breath, is going to be really, really good for us. So, that's going to get us nice and strong, strong heart, strong lungs, strong bones, strong muscles, and get us working really, really well so that we can have lots and lots of fun, play with our friends, and it'll help us stay nice and healthy too. And after that, oh, we might be tired. And then we're talking about sleep well, remember? Oh, I'm just sleep well. Mm, ready for a lie down, staying nice and clean and comfy. How many hours sleep do we need each night? What should you be aiming for? If you're age five to 11. So if you're five, if you're six, if you're seven, how many hours sleep do you think you might need each night? Have a little think, let's put it in the comments. How many hours sleep do we need each night? If we sleep well, we get more energy for the next day. We remember everything that we've learned from the day before. We can get ourselves nice and comfy and clean. We can reduce our screen time because that's gonna keep us awake even longer. The blue light from our screen will help keep us up rather than help us go to sleep. And we need to be wound down. So we might read a book, we might have someone else read to us, we might listen to a story. We're gonna make sure we're nice and rested and we're gonna try and get comfy and sleep for at least 10 hours every night. So think about what time you go to bed, what time you wake up, 10 hours making that pillow, staying nice and rested. Get us ready for that next day. Okay, we're gonna think about today's lesson. Last week we learned about gaining energy from food. It's fantastic, we need our energy. We were using our energy up by exercising. So we we're getting a lot more food in and energy out. We we're trying to balance our scales. This week we're thinking about, about the amount of each food that we need. So a portion size, a portion of each food. And I've got a question for you as well. Why does an adult eat more than a child? Can you comment below? Can you put it in the chat box? Why do you think an adult eats more than a child? Have a think, have a look at the adults who are with you now. What's the difference between them and you? Why do they eat more than you? Why do they have more than a child? Why are their portion sizes bigger? Why is their plate bigger? Why do they have more, more different types of foods? Have a think. Comment below. Let's see. Why do you think an adult eats more food than a child? I'm going to look at our picture here. We've got some pictures of different portion sizes. So an adult generally will be bigger. They'll be taller, their bones and muscles will be bigger. So their body will burn more calories just by doing day to day things like keeping their heart beating, their lungs going, their brain working. And their body is larger, so all their organs are larger, they can digest more and different types of foods. So the types of food that you will need are foods that will help you to grow and change and develop. Whereas an adult will just need to make sure they're maintaining, especially if they're active, they can burn a lot more calories, a lot more, use up a lot more energy, so they'll need more food. So we're gonna have a little thing today about portion sizes for you as children at primary school age, and also for adults as well. But mainly we're focusing on you, but we'll try and find a way that we can balance that and make it work for everyone. So here is an example of the portions needed of each group on our Eat Well Guide. So we looked at it earlier a little bit, that green area, fruits and vegetables, yellow area, starchy carbohydrates, pink area was our protein, our blue areas, our dairy. And I've got a little representation down here as well, but green, pink, blue and yellow again. And we need more of those bigger areas. See how they're bigger on the plate? We need more of those fruits and vegetables and more of those starchy carbohydrates because we need lots of energy and lots of vitamins and minerals in everything that we do. Our proteins 
and our dairy products can be quite high in fat, can be quite high in sugar if we choose the wrong one. So we need to make sure that we're limiting those to two or three portions a day and we're getting enough to help our bodies grow and we can have plenty of the others as well. So here's our next big question. How much is a portion of food? What does that mean for you? So have a think, can you comment below? How much is a portion? What does that mean? Is your portion gonna be bigger than mine? So what about for you? What's a portion of food for you? So if I was saying, what's a portion of rice or pasta or what a portion of fruit or vegetables? What is a portion size for you? How much is a portion of food? We know we've got to eat at least five portions of fruits and vegetables a day. What is that? So here's an example. We're going to be using hand sizes today to try and make sure that it's visual so that we can see it and we can help understand it. And also it's something that's always going to be there around your plate when you go to have your dinner and you can kind of compare it a little bit. I'm not saying you need to pick up your food and hold it in your hand, but you can put your hand next to your plate and see if you've got the right sizes or you might think about different ones. And also our hand size is proportionate. So my hand might be bigger than your hand, might be smaller than someone else's hand, but for my body it's proportionate. So I know that my hand size is related to my body. Your hand size is related to your body. So let's have a little look at our first area today. Fruits and vegetables. So our fruits and vegetables are really, really good for our immune system. They keep us healthy. So the different vitamins in fruits and vegetables are gonna help us stay nice and, ni nice and healthy. So we're not poorly as often. Uh, we don't get as many colds. We can get to school more. We can play with our friends, but we won't miss out on football matches or horse riding or whatever it is that we like to do. So we're eating at least five of these a day. And we're measuring that with a handful. So a handful of fruits and vegetables. I've got my fruits and vegetables on here. We can have a mixture of different things. We might have different types of vegetables, different fruits. Some could be tinned or frozen or fresh or leafy greens. We've got all sorts of different things on there. And we're having a handful. So when we have our different fruits and vegetables, we're trying to eat a rainbow, we're trying to eat lots of different colors of them. because they all have different vitamins and minerals in. And our portion sizes help us do that. So a portion for me might be a larger orange, whereas a portion for you might be a smaller orange. But you can see how mine is my handful. If your hand is a bit smaller than mine, that might be a perfect portion size for you. So we're trying to think about how many portions we need, at least five. So that's an easy way to remember it. Five on our hand, and five's a handful. If it was three, it wouldn't be full. So it's five's a handful. So can we get a handful of fruits and vegetables so on my plate here, let's see if we can figure it out. So a handful for me, it's probably gonna be around three of these spoons. So let's see what it looks like on our plate. Now this is frozen veg, still keeps all that freshness, all those vitamins and minerals in there. So for me, that's one portion on there. I love peas and I love sweet corn and carrots, actually I love everything on this plate. So for me, that's one portion of fruits, and vegetables so for me veg with my lunch might be that much there okay for you guys probably gonna be similar because you still need loads of those vitamins that handful heaped on there it might be that mine's a little bit bigger so i have a little bit more but that's going to be a portion on there now for other different foods so if i've got carrots for example that's not going to fill my hand smaller carrot for a smaller person larger carrot for a larger person and it might be that the carrot gets chopped up or mashed up but it might be again that we're thinking about the size that it might be. If I was to break it in two, it might about fill my hand. That'd be a good size for me. I do love my carrots. So trying to have at least five portions a day. We're trying to have more vegetables than we are fruits because our vegetables are gonna give us a variety of different vitamins and minerals in them. Leafy greens and mushrooms and aubergines. You see all those different colors. Whereas our fruits generally have lots of similar vitamins in. And also they can be quite high in sugar as well. So we're trying to make sure that we're eating a nice balance of fruits and vegetables, finding the ones we like and trying to have them with each meal and as our snacks as well. Let's have a look at our starchy carbohydrates. Our starchy carbohydrates, these kind of foods here, are ones that give us loads of energy. We learned about that last week. So again, things like bread, our cereals, uh, spaghetti, rice, potatoes, fantastic to give us lots and lots of energy and again it was one of those big ones so it's five portions a day eat with every meal and a snacks so we can have those things so it might be have a slice of toast in fact one portion of bread for you guys will be a slice whereas for me it might be two 
So think about what you're having. And for this one, it's that hand again. So we're using our hand to measure it out. So if I wanted a portion of pasta, it might be a big handful of pasta. So it might be a big handful of pasta, put it onto my plate. If I was measuring it out, if it was cooked pasta, if I'm measuring out my pasta, for me, that whole plate would be a portion. So this whole plate, 75 grams of pasta is a portion size for me. For you, it's probably about half of that, 40 grams. So your plate there, now starting to take shape a little bit with pasta and our vegetables on there. So can we think about that handful when we have our meal? We don't just want it to be just pasta, it needs to have a balance, like that eat well plate, a balance of those different food groups there. So for our starchy carbohydrates, a small handful, it might be something different, it might be bread, it might be your Weetabix or cereal, or it might be a potato, whatever it could be that you have in there. Can we find that balance? Dairy and alternatives. So these are things like milk, cheese, um, might be some yogurt, you might have alternatives there like almond milk or oat milk or something a bit different. And often these are things added into them. So things like calcium, which are really, really good for our teeth and bones. And this is when we're talking about different people needing different portion sizes. You need two to three of these a day. You might drink more milk than me. Why do you think that might be? Have a think about what's changing for you guys that won't be for me. Here's a challenge for you. If you've got your adult with you, get them to put their arm out like this. And you put your arm out next to it. Because one day you're gonna be as tall as that person, you're gonna be as big as that person. So put your arm out next to theirs. Where does it come up to? Is it already longer than theirs? Is it already getting quite to that point? Was it a bit shorter? Most of you will have arms shorter than your parents at the moment and you'll be growing. Your bones will be getting bigger. And to do that, we need calcium to help us grow. So things like cheese and milk, you can have more of than maybe an adult one because your bones and your teeth are still growing and developing and they need that strength from those to make them nice and strong. And they need that activity as well to strengthen them up. So that's why we use our whole body. That's why we do things like jumping around and putting weight in our hands and pressing about because we're using and strengthening our bones. So for our portion size, we're gonna use our fist for that glass of milk, or it might be a finger's length for a stick of cheese. And some of our food products actually come in portion sizes. If you think of cheese strings, the shape of a finger, or it might be baby bells that are a small portion of cheese, and it could well be that your portion of cheese looks like that. There's four cubes, about the size of a dice, that are bunched up. So for them, it might balance down your finger, but it's hard to really measure that on your plate. So we're trying to make sure that we've got that finger amount. And you can have that grated, it might be a small handful of grated cheese. It's really, really easy to use the palm of our hand or our handful as a nice measuring tool for how much we've got. So it might be a handful of those. In fact, I'm gonna put some cheese on my plate here. I might have grated that up and put it onto my pasta, or I might put it over with my veg to make it taste a little bit different and change those things around. So I'm starting to build up that plate there. So my dairy products are gonna make us nice and strong. They've got energy in them as well. They've got proteins in them. So we can get extra protein from our protein area, things like meat and fish, but also if you're vegetarian, things like eggs and beans and pulses, chickpeas, very good in that as well. So finding that protein and trying to reduce the amount of fatty protein we have. So it's lean mint in our picture. It might be that you have reduced fat bacon or reduced fat sausages, and we try and find a nice balance. And for our portion, it's gonna be our palm size. So whereas your palm might be slightly smaller and fit on a nice piece of meat that's a little bit smaller than that, I might need a bigger one that fills my palm. And I can put that into my portion. It might be that one egg is a portion size there. It might be that one small sausage is, or medium sausage, or it might be that you have a different amount of fish or baked beans that we can have. So we're starting to find our balanced meal there as well. So we've got some fruits and vegetables, starchy carbohydrates, dairy products and some protein sources in there as well and there's loads of different vegetarian and vegan options available for you to get that protein into you as well so don't just think about it being the meat area it's that protein area because protein is the building blocks of our body everything that we in our bodies is made up of proteins they help us grow so everything from our fingernails to our hair to our skin is made of the proteins 
and our body's fantastic at converting all our different foods into those proteins to help us grow and repair. So if you get a cut, it's those proteins that go to work to help heal it. So we're eating two to three portions of those a day. We're finding a variety of those and we're making sure that we are looking at that portion size as a palm of our hand. So when I'm thinking about my balanced diet, my balanced meal, it's got different food groups and it's got different types of food groups as well. So this might be one meal. And again, I might have made this completely differently. I might have mixed this about, I might have used beef mince, grated some cheese in, mixed some vegetables in like onions and mushrooms and carrots into some spaghetti and some tomato sauce and made it into a bolognese. So it might just look as one meal, but it might have all those different food groups in it. It might have all those different portions in it. And it's really, really easy to see if you help in the kitchen, something that we talked about last week that uses some energy up so that we're standing, we're moving, we're measuring, we're chopping. If you can help in the kitchen and help to measure out those foods and chop in those onions and dice them up and then slice them, slide them into your hand, you'll see what a portion is. So you'll know how many portions of each fruit and vegetable are going into your meal. So you'll know when you're weighing out the pasta. Can I put a handful in there and tip it in for each person? And then you'll know that however many people it's divided around, let's say there's three of you eating at home, you'll know that you've got three portions in there and you can split it evenly. Or you might know that one of those portions needs to be bigger for someone who's a bit bigger. One of those portions might be a little bit larger for someone who's been extra active that day. One of those portions might be a bit smaller for someone who's a bit smaller or hasn't been as active that day. And we're trying to find our balance so that we can get all those things in. And that's just one meal. Throughout the day, we're thinking of those things, and that's how it adds up to those different numbers. There's one area we're going to talk a little bit more about next week, and that's our sugars. We're trying to have no more than six teaspoons a day. So that's one of these. But next week, we're going to be doing a bit of a treat detective lesson, looking at some of our sugars. They're in different foods and drinks, and also salt as well, that we're trying to reduce the amount of. But we're trying to find out how much is in each food. So tune in next week for that one, and we'll cover that one in a lot more detail. But just now know that six or five or seven, depending on your age, but around six spoons or six cubes of sugar is about our maximum for a day. So those of you that did your homework and found out that Coca-Cola bottle, 500 millimeters has double the daily recommendation in that whole thing. We'll find out a bit more like that next week. So let's recap a few of our questions. How much food should we eat? Well, we know that it was five portions fruits and vegetables at least you can get more if you want especially if you're going for vegetables you can have five portions of starchy carbohydrates you might have two to three portions of dairy and two to three portions of protein so that's how much you're having what is a portion we were measuring it through our hand it might be that our hands change as we grow and they get bigger as our bodies get bigger and we need more food and more energy and why are the different food groups good for us? Why do we need to eat a balance? Because we're having different, we're getting different benefits from each group. So our fruits and vegetables give us lots of vitamins and minerals. Our starch carbohydrates give us lots of energy. Our proteins help us grow and repair. And our dairy products help us do a lot of those things as well, but also have those, those minerals such as calcium in them, which help our bones and our teeth. Quick recap for you guys then, which one of our foods did we measure with the palm of our hand? Just the palm. So not a handful, which one was just the palm of our hand? Can you remember? Have a little look at our foods now. Which one? Did I put the milk in my palm? Was it one of these that I put in my palm? Which one was a palmful? Can you comment below? Can you chat? Can you put it in the bar next to us? Let us know which one it is. Which one was a palm of our hand? It was our protein food. What about a finger? What did we measure with a finger? This one might even have been a small handful if we had rated it up. There's a big clue there. That was our cheese, wasn't it? It was a finger of cheese. So you might even see that on your plate if you're getting a cheese spread like this one. You might take one knife that's about the length of your finger, scoop a bit out, spread that onto your bread or whatever you're having it with. And a handful. Which one was a handful? That was a common one, wasn't it? We found that in our fruits and vegetables. Nice handful in there, or a nice handful of fruit. So for me, that apple is a perfect size for one portion of fruit for me. And also in some of our starchy carbohydrates, that handful was there to help one portion, one serving size on there. So if we can remember here, we've got our different areas, our fruits and vegetables, our starchy carbohydrates, our proteins and our dairies. And we're looking at that picture 
and we're using the size of the area as the amount that we need to have. So how much of each one? Can you remember what it was for the green one? Our fruits and vegetables, how many? Shout it out. Tell your adult, tell your teacher how many. Show me on your fingers. Hold them up. At least. What about our starchy carbohydrates? At least how many? Show me again. Hold those fingers up. Dairy products. We need two hands for this one. It's two to three. And the same for protein as well. Fantastic. You guys have got it. Fantastic. So we're eating a variety of different foods. We're having loads and loads of fun exploring new flavors, new tastes, new combinations, because that's what's great about food. We can mix things up. I can dip my sausage in my egg. I can put some Philadelphia on my toast. I can have some lettuce in my sandwich and try it out, or I can put some cheese on my potato. I can start mixing things up and make it a lot uh, varied for me so that I can try loads and loads of different things. So I have got a challenge for you guys before we go today. Your challenge today is to have a little look at the different colours of food that you eat today. You might have already had your breakfast. What colours are in your breakfast this morning? Did you chop any fruit or anything in today? Did you have a cooked breakfast, add some different colours in? Can you write down all of the different colours that you've had today? And think you might have your lunch coming up. My tummy might be starting to rumble. So I'm thinking about what can I eat at lunchtime and what different colours have I got? I've prepared a salad for lunch and I know I've got some cheese in there, which is white. I've got some lettuce in there, which is green some peppers in there which are red, there's some sweet corn in there which is yellow. So I've got loads of different colours already and I'm trying to eat that rainbow. I might have an orange and a carrot, both are orange, but they've got different vitamins and minerals in there as well. So the next challenge as well is for you to draw a picture of your perfect meal that contains the food group. So it might be something like mine here, really tasty, or it might be a meal that you create that contains all those food groups, maybe mixed together like a spaghetti bolognese or a curry, it might be something that you create. It might be that you just choose your favorite groups and you put them together. Or it might be that you can even go above and beyond if you're in year five and six, like those children watching at Brig or Stanford or um, Enfield, where I know that you're thinking about it really extending your learning. Can you think about making a whole day's worth that covers five portions of fruits and vegetables, five portions of starchy carbohydrates, two or three of dairy and two or three of protein over breakfast, lunch, dinner, with snacks in between and drinks as well. And can you try and cover all those different areas? I would love to see some of your pictures and those lists of those colors on the Facebook page. So that Facebook page is gonna stay up there so you can add those links in, comment on this video. It'll be fantastic to see as many photos if you wanna show them to your uh, premier education activity professional, your teacher that comes in, whoever it might be, and we can share those and we can share some of the best examples. Thank you so much for listening today and working really, really hard at home. It's been great to be able to help you guys again. Join us next week and share the information with other people. So let make, uh, let make sure that as many people as you know at home who are homeschooling or in other schools are watching, taking part and learning as well so that we can stay happy, healthy, fit and strong. Have a wonderful weekend. Get outside, be active, eat healthily, try something new. Let us know how you get on and we will see you very, very soon for even more Premier Wellbeing. Thank you so much and we'll see you soon.